You, David. Thank you. Um, just to say, I welcome questions or comments during this. So if you want to say something, feel free. That's your invitation. And yeah, let's get started. Um, when I was asked to do my testimony, I was a bit like, Ugh, giving, you know, talking about myself to a room full of people, not exactly my kind of fun, <laughs> my idea of fun. Um, and I was thinking, oh, I could do the conventional, like, I was born in a Christian family, and raised in a Christian family. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I then kind of realized, actually, my testimony is not about me. It's all about Christ. Um, so I was preparing something like, you know, who is Christ and who is Christ to me, um, to make it a bit more personal. Um, but as I was writing that um, this week, I don't know, I just felt inadequate. Not inadequate in that kind of Christ is, you know, Christ, he's Jesus, he's God. Um, who am I to talk about God? But more inadequate in that, if I look at my life recently, I just feel like I'm in a dry spell. I'm kind of like, yeah, I just kind of not praying as I should be. Um, only reading the Bible for like five minutes before I go to bed and then not really meditating on it. Um, and kind of, I don't know, just going through the motions a bit of a Christian. Um, I think we all, we've all kind of been there where kind of we just go to church, um, go to church, read the Bible, pray for like two seconds, and kind of doing those habits. And I thank God for the, all those habits, um, kind of in this dry spell. That's what's kind of kept me going, really, and kind of going to house group and men's group. But yeah, there was just this sense of inadequacy um, when I was preparing um, kind of my testimony. Um, but it was actually just last night, um, I was reading Isaiah. And there was just a little phrase in Isaiah that I came to, um, which was, the Lord has done it. And as I remembered kind of the previous passages I've read in Isaiah, I remember that phrase kept coming up, the Lord has done it, the Lord has done it, or the Lord will do it. And then it just hit me, it's kind of, the Lord has done it. You might be thinking, what has the Lord done? Well, everything. He's saved us. He saved me. And I realise, it's nothing to do with me. It's what God has done. The Lord has done it. When you think about that, it's kind of an unbelievable thing. Um, if you read Isaiah, kind of, it's curse after curse after curse. There's like seven chapters straight of curses, um, kind of on Israel and the surrounding nations. But then you, every so often, you just get this glorious chapter of God saving his people. And it just struck me that that's unbelievable. These Israelites, the kind of idolaters going away from God, even though they know what God has done for them, they keep going away from Him. And you kind of can't help but be frustrated at them. Um, like, they know what God's done for them. They, he took them out of Egypt. Like, they weren't a people now, they're God's people. And yet they keep going away from Him. Um, why do they keep going away from Him? You keep asking them. You keep asking that. But then I, I think to my, um, my niece, and she's only three, um, and she can be a bit troublesome. And so one day she was like throwing a pillow across the room, and my brother was like, stop throwing the pillow. And then my niece had like this moment where she was holding the pillow in her hand, and I'm pretty sure she knew, okay, I shouldn't throw the pillow, because my dad told me not to throw the pillow. And I know that if I throw the pillow, He's going to be upset, going to be angry at me. I know I'm going to get in trouble. But she just couldn't help herself. She just couldn't help herself, and she threw the pillow. And I feel like that's the issue, and that's us. Like, we know what God has done. But we just, yeah, we just can't help ourselves. And so kind of reflecting on that, and then reflecting... But God still cares, and God has still done amazing things. And in Isaiah, even though the Israelites have turned away from God, God promises to save them. It's unbelievable, because in Isaiah, 
you read that God is holy. In Isaiah 6, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with his glory. And Isaiah, when he sees God, he immediately turns down and says, woe is me. Woe is me. God is so holy, we can't look at him, we can't be in his presence. And yet, God saves his people. God wants us to be in his presence. And yeah, and so the Lord has done it. It's an unbelievable thing because God is so holy that he's done it. It's nothing that we do. You know, salvation isn't from us. Salvation is the Lord's doing. It's his prerogative. It says he initiates salvation. We don't deserve any of it. And so as I was reflecting last night, kind of, I'm in this dry spell of, kind of just going through the motions. But then just remembering that the Lord has done it just filled me with joy. Because I know that it doesn't depend on me. My salvation doesn't depend on me. It's all what God has done. And what God has done, when you think of what God has done, that's unbelievable too. You read in Isaiah, um, start of Isaiah 53, kind of the servant coming down. And who is the servant? It's Jesus. And what does it say in Isaiah 53? It pleased the Lord to bruise him. This is God the Father, God the Son, in eternal relationship, loving each other, eternal love. But then God sends his Son to earth. And it pleased the Lord to bruise him. What does that mean? I think it's not that it pleases God that Jesus died. I think it pleased God the reason why Jesus died. It pleased his son, pleased to bruise his son, so that he could be the firstborn among many. The firstborn among all those who believe. And just meditating about us, like, wow. God loves us, God loves me so much. He sent his son to die for me. Even though I am totally not worth it, even though no one is worth it, that's what God's done. He sent his son, and it pleased him to send his son. And the son willingly came so that we can come to God as our Father, that we can join in this kind of family. And so yeah, so um, yeah, as I was reflecting on that, it just filled me with awe, filled me with a bit of dread, but then it just filled me with joy. This is our God. What an amazing God. And so yeah, so kind of my testimony is just Jesus is Lord. That's my kind of profession, that's my confession. And I think to every believer, that's every believer's um, profession, that Jesus is Lord. Um, yeah, that Jesus is King over everything. Um, when you think of Lord, your instinct might be like, Lord of what? So you might think of, I don't know, Lord of the Rings, or Lord of the Flies, or Lord of the Dance. So what is Jesus Lord of, you might think? Oh, he's Lord of everything. Um, you see in Colossians that kind of in him and through him and for him, the world was created. You know, he, he created all things through him and for him was the world created. And so he's Lord of everything, from like the tiniest quarks, like subatomic particles, he's Lord of those, to like the moon, sun, stars, galaxies, he's Lord of those as well. And so he's Lord of everything, he's Lord of you, he's Lord of me. And that verse in Philippians, um, in Philippians 2, at the end where it says, every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess him. That's because, that's just who Jesus is. Like, um, yeah, when he returns, everyone, everything, kind of, even the devils will bow their knee, even demons will bow their knee, because... Jesus is Lord. That's who he is.
And it's amazing to think that that Lord came down to die for us. Um, but then it also says in Corinthians that no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Spirit. And that's because it's only through the Spirit that we can actually put our faith in Christ. So kind of, how did I become a Christian? I guess, kind of a conventional kind of, what is your testimony? Um, so yeah, I did grow up in a Christian family, and I'm very blessed um, for that. And I remember, well, from my memory, as in like, as soon as I can remember, um, my parents, well, my mum would read to me from the Bible every night before I would get to bed. And then when I kind of graduated from that, every night as a family, we have a family devotional, which is read through the Bible. And through that, I've read the Bible, I don't know, just in those times, maybe three times, I've kind of read through the Bible. And I don't know, that's kind of some application. Um, if you are kind of parents, or if you're going to be parents, um, even if you're not a parent, you're still part of a church family, so you can still kind of um, parent young children in our church. Do that, just read the Bible with your kids. Um, I'm definitely kind of planning to do that when we have our child. Just read your Bible with your kids, it's such a blessing. Um, because even now, I can still remember verses from, from then. Um, but did that make Christian? Did that make me a Christian? No. Um, it gave me lots of knowledge. I knew a lot about kind of God, about Jesus. Um, but I do remember when it came to kind of family devotional time, I would always be like, oh, I just want to play on my PS2 or whatever. Um, yeah, PS2. That, that's taking Yeah. Only 25. I do remember PS2. Um, but, um, yeah, so did that make me a Christian? It didn't, but it filled me lots of knowledge. And I think, as I reflect, I feel like I've had lots of knowledge about God. But did I have saving knowledge, if I can put it that way? Because um, I remember one time, uh, my dad took me aside. I was around ooh, maybe seven or eight. My dad took me aside, and he kind of sat me down, and he said, Are you a Christian? I was like, Yeah, I read the Bible every day with you, Dad. Come on. But he was like, no, but that's not what it means to be a Christian. To be a Christian, it means you believe that Jesus died for your sins. And then, kind of, we prayed a prayer. But during that conversation, I can remember being a bit confused and also kind of just wanted to get back to my PS2. <coughs> Tell a lot about me. Um, so, even though I said that prayer, was I a Christian? Probably not, because I didn't fully realize what it meant to be a Christian, even though my dad tried to explain it. I just didn't fully realize what it meant to be a Christian. Um, and, like, to me, I can remember, like, just thinking, if I just do the right things, say the right things, um, you know, be good, don't do anything bad, that's enough. Um, I think, well, the world feels like that. I mean, that's what the world does, they just try to be good. Um, that's not what saves us. Um, so yeah, so, that's, so kind of going on into secondary school, um, and I was just thinking, secondary school is probably the hardest place to be a Christian, I think. Um, if you have kids in secondary school, pray for them. We as a church should be praying for our kids in secondary school. And it was kind of bad in my day, but these days it's worse. And I know from kind of training to a teacher last year, um, yeah, that's just another kind of application for us. Pray for our kids in schools. Um, but being in secondary school, I would say I was a Christian. Um, and, you know, I tried to kind of be good. But was I any different to my friends? No. Like, we're called to be light and salt in the world, but I can't say I was. Um, you know, kind of, being in secondary school, you kind of all the peer pressure to just fit in with people, to just kind of have a group of friends. Um, and yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Um, like a part of me knew, like, this isn't right, I should be living for God, not for my friends. I shouldn't care what my friends are thinking of me, I shouldn't care kind of, yeah, how 
I'm living for God. Um, but that wasn't what I was saying. And to kind of, yeah, the crude jokes uh, my friends would make, I kind of go along with them and laugh along with them. And yeah, I kind of just, yeah, going down the wrong path, really. Um, I remember my dad making me read Proverbs 1. Um, so I read Proverbs 1, came back to him. And then he asked me, so what did you learn? And I was like, uh, it talks about fruit. And that's not what Proverbs 1 talks about at all. At all. Um, Proverbs 1 is all about, um, yeah, kind of wisdom. The fear of the Lord being the beginning of wisdom. And Proverbs 1 is all about kind of the father saying to his son, beware of evildoers. Don't do what they do. Don't go along with them. Beware of them. And that's what my dad was trying to kind of teach me, be aware of him, but obviously he didn't learn the lesson. And in secondary school, I kind of was going down the wrong, wrong way. And kind of cut a long story short, kind of just temptations of kind of pornography, which is really strong. Um, kind of sitting in front of my computer and kind of trying to justify kind of oh, if I just type this into Google Images, I'm not typing anything bad. If something bad comes up, oh, it's not my fault. But then that's a slippery road, like a really slippery road. And then you start to get a bit more brave with what you're typing into Google Images. Um, and so, yeah. And during that time of kind of doing this, I was in agony, I was spiritual agony. Because I knew what I was doing was wrong. I knew it. It's kind of my niece. She knows that throwing that pillow is wrong. She just can't help herself. I knew what I was saying was wrong. I just couldn't stop. And every day I'd pray, Lord, help me stop. And then maybe I'd stop for like a day and I'd give myself a pat on the back, but then the next day it'd happen again. Maybe I'd stop for two days or a week and I'd be like, yes, I've done it. And the next day, we'll straight back into it. Um, and yeah, I was just in complete agony. I just, I remember kind of just, yeah, just kind of dropping to my knees and saying, Lord, help me, I need your help. And then one day became a week, became a few months, became a year where I hadn't kind of touched any of, any of that. And I knew that was Lord's work. So whenever I tried to stop by myself, I couldn't. I just, I just gave into temptation. Um, so yeah, so I, I still thank God to this day that He helped me overcome that. Um, but yeah, but during that time, just the shame I felt um, in that, just yeah, the absolute shame. Um, but then I remember going to church and just hearing this word grace. What does grace mean? And yeah, the pastor there, Ron Hollins, um, he always used to say grace, G R A C E, is God's riches at Christ's expense. We don't deserve anything. We deserve damnation. I deserved damnation. But God gave us Christ. We don't deserve it, but he did. He loves us because he loves us. And I just remember hearing kind of his sermons week after week and just being like, wow, what an amazing God we have. What an amazing God we have. And so, yeah, so um, I think, yeah, it was during that time when I stopped kind of looking at kind of pornography, um, was around year 10, I'd say. Um, and then kind of in year 11, in the beginning of year 11, uh, we had a trip to Germany for 10 days. Um, it was a fun trip, but being surrounded by non-Christians was very hard. And I just remember coming back from that trip and just being like, yeah, no, I am a sinner and I need God. I need Christ. So it's during that time, when I just kind of gave myself completely to the Lord, and 
recognizing that I'm a sinner and I'm only saved by grace in Christ. Um, and so yeah, so it's during that time. And then I was baptized, I think, a year later. Um, and then I came to uni. And if being in secondary school is the hardest place to be a Christian. I think being at uni, for me at least, is kind of the easiest place to be a Christian. Um, just because at my uni, the Christian Union was really good. And there were really good churches around as well. Um, and so yeah, just kind of being stuck in a church, um, that's kind of another application. If we do have kind of young people going off to uni, just kind of telling them, just get stuck into a church. Um, in spring for them, and that they do get stuck into a church. Because um, getting stuck into a church kind of, at uni, just kind of, just really helped me flourish. Um, kind of, at secondary school in sixth form, I was kind of like, or well, in sixth form particularly, kind of, I was kind of, yes, I'm a Christian, but I don't really share my faith that much. Um, but then going to uni, kind of being stuck in the CU and at church, kind of just, yeah, opportunities to share the gospel just kept coming. And yeah, it was an amazing time just seeing kind of God working um, in that city, God working in that, in that uni, um, kind of people coming to faith, uh, students coming to faith. And it was an amazing time. Um, yeah, but then in my fourth year um, of uni, that's when things started to go a bit rocky. And I wasn't kind of diagnosed being depressed, but I feel like I really did hit a really low point um, in my fourth year when I just couldn't, I just didn't want to you know, face the next day. I just couldn't do it. Because like, my studies weren't going that great, and my final project wasn't going that great. Um, other things were happening as well. And then, yeah, kind of came to my knees, came down to my knees again, and kind of, God, please just help me. Um, and I remember one day, kind of, I had a meeting with my project supervisor, and it seemed to go okay. And then I was just riding my bike back to um, my room. And I just remember kind of just feeling the, kind of, uh, feeling the breeze and just thinking to myself, Wow, God, you are so good. Even right now, when I feel like I'm drowning, you still care about me. You still love me, and you know bad things happen to me. That's okay because Jesus is Lord, and that's all that matters. And so I just had that yeah realization. You know, I might be feeling down, but Jesus is Lord, and so I can carry on with my life. Because Jesus is Lord. Um, and I was just such a comfort. And kind of, then COVID hit, which was something else, but Jesus is Lord. He's Lord over COVID. And that's fine. Um, yeah, and then, yeah, so I think, kind of since then, I've trained to be a teacher and now I'm working um, as a software engineer. Um, but kind of through my life and kind of having this opportunity to give my testimony, kind of just reflecting on kind of my journey, just realizing that, you know, bad things can happen, but Jesus is Lord. Even in the dry spells, even when you're feeling kind of spiritually weak, Jesus is Lord. And we just need to keep trusting in Him. Um, a verse, probably the first verse I memorized, was Proverbs 3 verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. As a child, I was definitely leaning on my own understanding. I had kind of all the knowledge, um, having read the Bible so much, had all the knowledge, but I didn't trust in the Lord. And so if we just put our trust in the Lord, He will make our path straight. And bad things may come, and we might be buffeted around, but Jesus is Lord. Um, so yeah, I think that kind of is just my winning side. Jesus is Lord. I can't say it enough, um, because that is the truth. Um, Christ is Lord over all things, yes, but so much more. Jesus is Lord means so much more than just Jesus is Lord of all. It means that Jesus is 
God, he's the kind of self-existing one. He doesn't need us or anything. And the fact that he came down to save the people for himself and to make a people for himself blows my mind. So yeah, um, do you have any questions? Or?